Okay, then in this in this same category of reactions in which oxygen hydrogen bond breaks, there's a very important reaction and which is also used as a test of phenol. If you make this phenol to react with this FeCl3, now Fe here is in have a charge of plus three, it's ferric ion. Now oxygen forms a complex with this ferric ion and obviously when it will be giving its electron it will gain a plus charge and due to that H plus will come out. H plus will be released and HCl will come out. So phenol is going to form a complex like this. Fine. And this is this this has a color, it has an intense color from purple to reddish brown. This test is also given by enols because the, in this phenol you can observe that this is a kind of enol. You have alkene and you have an alcohol. So in general any enol will give this test. If you have this enol, this will also give the test. If you have other enols, that will also give the test. For instance, test would be given by this compound also because there is a enol here as well. So this is in general test for any uh, enol and phenol being a enol will give this test. And whether it's a phenol or it's other aliphatic enols we have to if we have to test that <coughs> sorry then we have to go for bromine water test because bromine water would be added on this aliphatic alkene bromine water will not be added in uh, in uh, will not show the kind of addition reaction it shows in this aliphatic alkene that reaction will not be shown on the aromatic alkene so if 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 this ferric chloride test is coming positive that does not confirm phenol that confirms the enol and we have to confirm phenol we have to go for other tests like bromine water test but nevertheless it's an important reaction and phenol also gives an intense color of purple or it may uh, depending upon the concentration the color will vary from purple to reddish brown so this is FeCl3 test so for example, if, if I have ethanol, if I have ethanol and if I have phenol and uh, they are contained in two beakers and uh, uh, the chemist forgot and because it was not labeled, which one is what? Then on adding FeCl3 to the sample of uh, a compound, if that turns reddish brown or it have an intense color, then that is supposed to be phenol because this is not our enol this will not give FeCl3 test so that's how this that's why this 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 test is useful in identifying or differentiating between phenol and other alcohols similarly this oxygen can act as a nucleophile in some other cases as well and we have seen before how this phenol reacts with acyl chloride this carbon has del positive charge, this oxygen has lone pair, this will be a simple nucleophilic reaction. This oxygen is going to attack carbon, C double, C double bond O is going to break, chlorine is going to come out in order to facilitate the formation of C double bond O. And this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is the oxygen. This is phenyl alkyl ester. So this reaction you are familiar with, there is nothing new. Instead of acyl chloride, if we have dimethyl sulfate like this, then uh, uh, can you predict the product on reaction of phenol with dimethyl sulfate, what will be the product? Uh, Look, this oxygen has to attack someone and that someone should be such that it should have a plus charge polarity. Now, uh, there are two options. Either this oxygen can go and attack the sulfur and then 
S double bond O will break and then one group has to come out in order to facilitate the formation of S double bond O. The, uh, but the, 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 the point is, there's, there's, there's a hindrance. There's a hindrance because in this case, the geometry was trigonal planar. In this case, the geometry is tetrahedral. So to approach the sulfur will be more difficult in tetrahedral geometry because it's a planar geometry. It can come from the top because the whole molecule is in a plane. So there is no hindrance at all. In this case, it's not a planar geometry. It's a tetrahedral geometry. And to approach the sulfur atom in a tetrahedral geometry will be difficult. So rather what happens is this oxygen, the oxygen of phenol, attacks this carbon. When that happens, a marvelous leaving group from the right hand side will come out. When this carbon is being attacked by oxygen, the electron of this bond will go into the orbital of oxygen. And that oxy the negative charge on oxygen has a facility of doing resonance with two pi bonds. There will be three equivalent resonating structure of this molecule and it is very stable because in all the resonating structures the charge is on oxygen atom and it is dispersed on three oxygen atoms. So this is very stable. It's a good leaving group. That's why this phenol, phenyl will attack, this phenol will attack methyl and from this side this group will come out. And what you have is methoxybenzene. So you have to keep this mind. I mean, there's no concept in this. This, this is a general understanding of nucleophilic attack that we have built till now. Okay. So this is, these were the reactions in which the bond between oxygen and hydrogen are broken. There could be other reactions in which the bond between carbon and oxygen will break. This bond will break. Now, there are many reactions in which this happened, but we'll be looking just at one. In which, if you add zinc dust, now zinc dust causes reduction. Zinc loses electron and those electrons goes into the orbital of carbon and that C- developed snatches hydrogen from somewhere and become benzene. That's the reaction. Zinc dust will reduce phenol to benzene and OH group will come out, hydrogen will come in. This is an important reaction because it's, it's, it's very important to, uh, it's, the reaction is very important if you want benzene directly from phenol. Otherwise, uh, there is no such direct reaction to bring benzene directly from phenol. So it's an important reaction during conversions, we will be looking at this reaction somewhere. This reaction will appear in any kind of conversion problem that we'll be doing. So uh, it's an important reaction. Zinc dust is going to reduce phenol to benzene. 